Hello, YouTube family. Auntie is here. I'm Patty Jackson. I am your auntie of pop culture, as I love to say. It's not cute not knowing, and now we're going to know. There's so much going on. Come on, get this hug in. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Auntie, I read the comments. I read them. Subscribe to the channel and you never miss a thing. There is a weekend edition that is fancy. I have a young woman who puts it all together with the fanciness and the pictures. It's the weekend entertainment update. It's not cute, not knowing. I'm Patty Jackson. I'm your auntie of pop culture. I'm gonna go through some things real quick. I don't know why I kept having brain for it yesterday. Donald Glover. When he's not acting, because he's going to be getting his own Star Wars spinoff, he's Childish Gambino. Redbone, This Is America are two of uh, songs that he's most known for. Yesterday, I was talking about Mars Chestnut, the new docuseries that he's going to be narrating on the own channel, kicks off September 29th. Rebuilding Black Wall Street is a docuseries entitled Greenwood. It was over a little over 100 years ago, May 31st, 1921. There was a town in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the Greenwood District. Mobs came. They didn't like the way that African Americans were living and thriving. And they, they descended upon this town. And it stands out as the single most horrific incident of racial terrorism since slavery. 300 people were killed. Homes, businesses burnt to the ground. What they're doing in this own special is, Mars Chestnut is going back not only to history, but what has happened over this 100 years as this town faced rebuilding. I just had to, to get that out because people were like, no, it was Florida. No, this was Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1921. It debuts September 29th. I also put out there, where's MC Hammer? The 61-year-old rapper is now a minister, Northern California, with his wife, five children, and guess what? He went through all of that financial turmoil. MC Hammer is still a millionaire. Beyonce, she'll be bringing her Houston show to Houston, her hometown. I'm hearing not only will it feature Megan the Stallion, but a Destiny's Child reunion as well. Get ready for the Millie Vanilli story. It's coming at Paramount Plus October 24th. Back in the late 80s and in 1990 is when it all came to a head. You had Rob and Fab, and they took the music world by storm. Catchy pop tunes like Girl, You Know It's True. The dancing, the hair, they were attractive, but they never sang the song. In 1990, they actually won the Grammy for Best New Artist. During the performance, a tape malfunctioned. And it was like, they're not singing. They weren't singing the songs. It was all made up from producers and the actual people that were singing it. They were deemed not marketable and not attractive. But Rob and Fab had the look. This really destroyed the guys because they said they thought they were doing a one-off. Okay, we'll let y'all use these vocals, but we want to sing our own songs. They never let them sing. Rob passed away in 1998 from an accidental alcohol and drug overdose. Fab has moved on, but he said that they were used and abused and didn't even want to be a part of this big fraud, but it really destroyed their music career. I interviewed them I, it was when I first came to DAS, late 80s, and they brought them to this mall, Cheltenham Mall. Well, child, they walked in there like they was bigger than the Beatles. They were bigger than the Beatles. Don't look at them. Don't touch them. And it was crowds of people, and it was all this excitement. Nelly Vanilli is here. All I could think about was that moment in the mall. They were like the Beatles, or should I say, they were, they were all... Um, 
they were all the David Ruffins and the Temptations. Like you couldn't do nothing. They were just, they were the stars. And how they didn't even sing it. But how devastating. Now, for a lot of people, they're like, well, there's lip singing going on all the time. It sure is. It sure is. So what Robin Fab got caught up in was nothing new, but it was devastating. This documentary is coming out on Paramount Plus October 24th. You know I'm going to keep reminding you that this is coming. Let's talk divorces. Jeezy is divorcing Jenny Ma of The Real. They've only been married two years. They just had a baby. Their wedding pictures were beautiful. Jeezy got a new book, Adversity for Sale. He's doing well with that, with his podcast. But what happened? What happened in this marriage for Jeezy to say, I'm out? This is amazing because it was just like the both of them were so in love. I'm telling you, they had the best wedding pictures, the blending of the families. But Jeezy has pulled out. Another shocking divorce is the Wolverine guy, Hugh Jackman. Broadway star, movie star, actor. He's divorcing his wife of 27 years. And they put out some statement. It's all about growth. Sometimes you can grow, grow apart from a partner, but that was very shocking because it always seemed like they had a very strong marriage. This Monday, Jennifer Hudson is returning with new producers. Sherry Shepard show is returning. New producers. It's going to be interesting to see the changes in the show. Barbie is streaming on the video on demand. Fast 10. It is streaming now on the Peacock channel. Actor Tyler James Williams, Mr. Gregory from Abbott Elementary, has had to go to a judge to get a restraining order against the stalker. This is the backstory with the stalker. The stalker first started harassing Tyler James Williams. Y'all know we know him from Everybody Hates Chris on social media. Then the man traveled all the way across the country and showed up where he lived. He lives in the gated apartment. I don't know how he got in there. But he would ring the doorbell. In one instance, he rang Tyler James Williams' doorbell 30 times within a four-hour period. The man was claiming they were involved. But Eddie says, Tyler, <laughs> look at me, Eddie, Mr. Gregory. Tyler James Williams says he does not know this man. Now, I know how cynical you are, so I'm just going to finish telling the story. The man is, he said, is delusional because they're not in any kind of relationship, and he is not in a relationship with the man. There's a lot of holes in this, so just keep going with me. But he's having a problem with a stalker, and stalkers are, are, are no fun. And if they can get that close, he can't even go back there to live. Because the man not only knows where he lives, but knows how to get inside the gated community to get in the area of the ring camera and ring the bell. Strange. I'll keep you posted on what's going on. Tyler Perry recently made headlines. He's giving out love advice, y'all. Tyler Perry says, and y'all know I love Tyler. Tyler Perry says... Date that broke man. So what if he doesn't have money? You date him. See, it's not. Oh, this is my Deja. Deja, come in. This is the young lady who teaches me all the stuff on social media. Come around and say hi. This is the YouTube family. Oh, this is family. this is this this is the future right here. <laughs> she 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 is the future. Okay. Tyler Perry says, "Date that broke man." Your thoughts. This is a an unfolding thing, and I'll tell you why. No, you shouldn't discriminate against a guy because he may not have as much money as you. He may not be as well as you. I always say that if you're in a position and you make more money than that man, you can't throw it in their face because you got to let a man be a man. You got to let a man be a man. You can't do the, I make more money than you. You can't do that. 
Can't do that. Take this out to your party. <laughs> Some men cannot handle a woman who makes more money than them because they want to be the ones in charge. Sometimes in life, you may find someone they may have fallen on hard times and they need to get back on their feet. I don't think he means to take care of a broke man because that's a whole nother thing. But he says, don't be afraid to date. And he's like, date that broke man. I really need to know your thoughts. Now, y'all know I go through the comments. So we're going to talk about this again on Monday. But what do you think? Many people say, well, would Tyler Perry date a broke woman? Tyler got a lot of money. So anybody he dates would be, I guess, considered broke because he makes money, 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 money. But what do you think about that? Do you think that some people limit their chances because they won't? I'm telling you, some men cannot handle if you are the breadwinner. They can't. They can't handle it. Uh, it's something a man likes to feel like they're a man. Now, the new breed of men... <laughs> Some of the younger ones, they 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 going to ride along with it. They like, come on, you got money. Who that means I got money too. So I don't think he means to take care of a man. But don't be afraid and don't limit your choices. It is hard to date someone and they don't have any money. It is because you want them to get on their feet and at least be able to do something. Now, for many people, it's many circumstances. They got child abuse. Child abuse. It's Friday. I'm sleepy. They've got um, child support. The cost of living today is just... Phew. And then you think of child support taken. They could have fallen on hard times. So it's not difficult. Now, there are men who will be like, well, I would date a broke woman. Yeah, if she's cute, she probably date her. she probably get a chance there. But it, it's a difficult thing. But I need, I just want to know what you guys think about Tyler Perry saying, date that broke man, date him. I thought it was interesting that he would be giving up this kind of advice because there's so many layers to this. So many layers to this. And it's not always easy, especially today. I'm going to segue into the podcast that I do, Patty of the Millennials. It's Millennials, Gen X, I'm the baby boomer. I'm not a, a millennial. I brought up, and we talk with men and women, how are millennials surviving in this economy today? Must you have a side hustle, side gig in order to survive? You think of your bills. You think of wanting to go out. You think of just wanting to have stuff. How can you afford everything? Do you still live <laughs> with your parents? Do you get roommates? Because the cost of living is so much. I really love this conversation. And I brought in a financial expert to talk about it. But in today's society... Do you think it's necessary or a must that you got to have a side gig in order to survive? Pandora, Spotify, iHeartRadio Podcast, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud. iHeartRadio is the number one podcast in the world. we got to keep segueing here. But it was a great conversation, and I would love to know your thoughts on that as well. I know you're saying, damn, Patty, you asked a lot of questions. I do. I really want to find out why Jeezy is divorcing his wife. <laughs> like, what happened? He filed for divorce. Should you date that broke man? Leave your comments below. It's not cute not knowing there's a weekend edition, so check it out as well. Thanks for joining me. Have a great weekend. I'm Patty Jackson. I am your auntie of pop culture. <laughs>